Hello guys, uh, this is Amrit Pal Singh. I'm here to present my another video on Apache Hadoop. In today's video, we will see what's the role of combiner in the MapReduce program, okay, and uh, how we can implement the same in the Eclipse, right? So bef uh, before starting the like uh, combiner, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, discuss very briefly about the MapReduce uh, data cycle, right? You can see on the screen actually I uh, have displayed one image in front of you which is which actually actually uh, exp uh, explaining that how uh, the whole process actually goes in the map reduce right so first of all we have our uh, input data okay then we got input format followed by input split record reader mapper and then we got combiner so today uh, more focus is on the combiner itself okay but uh, before it i would like to discuss like before uh, getting the data at combiner what different phases the data has to go through right first of all we got an input data okay there are, there are multiple phases in the map reduce right like input files input format input split record reader mapper i'll discuss these all phases in, in a separate video right in a more detail today i'll discuss in very briefly that how we uh, like what are different phases through which data has to go through before reaching the combiner right first of all we have a data at the sdfs right hadoop distributed file system so it is uh, stored in the form of input files, right? Then from here, uh, we need to define how we, uh, we need to define our files, right? It is decided by input format, which defines that how did input files are split and read. So input splits, then uh, it is created by input format. What's the meaning is like uh, it logically represent the data which will be processed by individual mapper. So one map, map task is created for each split, thus the number of map tasks is equal to number of splits. Means the input split will be created by this uh, input format, right? Uh, which will be fed to the mapper. It means one mapper will be assigned one split, right? So afterwards, the split is record divided into records and each record will be processed by mapper. So these are some of the uh, formats available, okay, in MapReduce, right? We'll discuss it later on. Now, the first record reader uh, communicates with the input split and converts the data into the key value pairs because you all know that the map mapper only understands the language of key values, right? So it will uh, generate a key value pairs for the mapper. So mapper then uh, processes each input record, okay? And then generates the new key value pair, which will be fed to the reducer. Now, uh, in this case, at this step, we have got a combiner available. So what is combiner? Combiner is nothing but a kind of mini reducer. So what's the meaning? The thing is, uh, like the question may be asked that if we have a reducer available, why does the need of combiner? Because uh, like uh, uh, in today, uh, like in this video, I will uh, I'll just take example of little word count problem, right? The thing is, there's uh, like here uh, we are working with a very uh, li limited data, very small data, but in a real time scenario, when we have a data of one TB or one PB, right? In very large quantity, then the combiner will play a very important role because combiner will do the local computation because we know that we got a mapper and reducer available the mapper will send the uh, data to the reducer and reducer will do the aggregation or computation right but thing is if the if we if we have a very large data available then mapper will reduce the n number of key value pairs that n number of key value pairs will not be processed as efficient as in efficiently by the reducer so uh, to over, to reduce the overhead of reducer, we'll be having one combiner. That's why it's called mini reducer. The code of the reducer and the combiner will be exactly same because the combiner and reducer will both do the aggregation, right? But in this case, the uh, combiner will work in the mapper side, right? Not in the reducer side. So reducer will get the very lit little data to process, not that bigger data, right? So that's why combiner is also known as a mini reducer. However, MapReduce combiner performs local aggregation on mappers, which helps to minimize the data transfer. Because the thing is, uh, that's why I'm uh, uh, like uh, discussing earlier as well. Like, although we perform the very little computation on our systems or laptops, like for example, we're doing some little uh, 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 word count, right, or some other uh, uh, problems like this. So actually, here we are generating very very little uh, data, right? We are just generating what uh, uh, we can say. Um, very limited key value pairs and here we not only we also not working on the network right but on the network and with the uh, generation of n number of key values pairs is very difficult to process the data on time as well right it, it would be a lot of overhead for the reducer to generate or to process the data that's why we got combiner right 
so after combiner we got a partitioner which will decide that how the data which is coming from mapper will be sent to the reducers okay so this is all this is the like a uh, the plot of the like um, map reduce and after partitioner uh, we have uh, we have shuffling and sorting phase and uh, last we got a output right we'll discuss this all these steps in more detail in this other video but today we would i would like to talk about only combiner right so for this i have used one example here this is i hope it will be clear then now uh, in the left side you can see on the screen that we got multiple mappers available so uh, what was my uh, like a uh, problem in this case is that in one text file i've written see how easily you can code multiple times right i need to count uh, like how many times that every uh, word is appearing in my file right so what we'll do now in this case as i have given the task to multiple mappers to do the same thing for me right uh, in this example i have made four mappers right one mapper second mapper this one third and fourth right so this mappers okay will generate the in, uh, key value pairs and will be sent over the network so that's why i've written here transmission over the network then it will be first get by partitioner which will which will decide that which uh, like uh, uh, how the data will be mapped to the reducers because to understand more of partitioner i can have it written here imagine a scenario that i have 100 mappers and 10 reducer how i distribute data from the 10 to 100 to 10 reducer here your uh, matrix partition partition will play a important role right so partitioner will uh, like get the data you can see here c again c it will write all the occurrences of uh, like uh, c till this point i haven't done any aggregation the aggregation will be done at the reducer side right at this point reducer side so so here to overcome this problem we have got what combiner so what combiner will do combiner will process the like uh, the output given by the mapper in the mapper side itself okay uh, like uh, it means we are not sending the data generated by the mapper or key value pairs generated by mapper straight away to the reducer side we will just do that computation locally on the left side only on the mapper side only okay so that we will be sending lesser number of uh, key value pairs to the reducer side i hope you have got the point right so uh, we can say the combiner is playing the role of reducer but on the mapper side so that the it, it can lower down the number of uh, key value pairs gen generated by the mapper so that there will be no overhead on the reducer because in the real time in the real time scenario we are having we need to we need to deal with the data of tbs or tbs or terabytes right there's a lot of big lot of data available so on that case uh, there will be a lot of overhead on the reducer right so to remove this problem we have a combiner available on the mapper side right fine so like uh, that's why i've written the like this a little uh, piece of co uh, lines here so that you can understand the role of partitioner as well although this is not a part of this video we'll discuss it later on so you just simply uh, remember that partitioner help us to map the uh, key value pairs generated by the mappers to the reducer because uh, we all know that we have we'll be having uh, more number of mappers than the reducers right so the how we can map such uh, like a uh, thing we, that's why we got a partitioner available so to how to overcome the how to like uh, do the same thing in our uh, program okay so in today's video i, I will let's take an example of the again same example which i have taken in the previous video as well word count problem okay but uh, on that program i have just added the combiner code as well i can show you now this is the again the same code okay which i have used in previous two videos okay to help you understand that how we can make use of uh, eclipse eclipse for the map reduce program this word count program okay using map reduce okay so the same it is the same code i haven't done anything but i've just added one piece of code here this one okay this set of lines i've added to the existing word count code okay rest everything is same you can see that public class word count is exactly same we got mapper exactly same reducer exactly same what i was what, what i have added is the the combiner because i've already told you the purpose of combiner is same as reducer so you can see there's no change in the map uh, the combiner or the reducer code because both of them are doing what the computation or aggregation they just calculating the sum okay and just giving us the answer that how many time every word is appearing in the file you can see all as well like uh, uh, this one uh, that public static class here this is my uh, combiner uh, combiner name class name of combiner wc combiner extends reducer so it's also inheriting the feature of reducer right 
so what it what it has got the see the uh, arguments of both reducer and uh, combiner text intraitable text intraitable again same text intraitable text intraitable because uh, like it is inheriting the feature of the reducer so everything is same you can see that uh, here we have got us uh, we assigned the initially the sum is equal to 0 then we just calculating the sum right and then we are writing the sum so exactly same so what one more thing you need to add in your existing program is the given the combiner class name so my combiner class name is wc underscore combiner where we have uh, where i have written here rest everything is same so it is the same code okay which i have used in a previous uh, previously right uh, uh, those who haven't uh, seen that video please visit my uh, channel for the apache uh, hadoop playlist you will find the previous videos right although i'll also put the description in my uh, video as well okay so that you can just go to the previous video to get uh, like uh, familiar with the word count program where i have explained uh, everything line by line right so the same program i haven't done anything but just i've added this this combiner code which is exactly a replica of the what the reducer right it means uh, like uh, the output of this uh, in entire program will be exactly same you will not ch find any change in output okay because we are doing the same thing right we're just doing the word count but what i've done then is like uh, i've just have reduced the overhead of the reducer because here i've got a combiner which will do the local computation so the lesser code will be sent to the reducer side it means there's no change in the output we will find in the at last right so i hope you got a point okay so this is my what my uh, combiner code which i've appended to my existing word count problem so how to do it uh, i've already explained in the last video that how we can set up eclipse and uh, how we can run our first map reduce or word count program so do the same thing right so i've already opened my open up my uh, uh, eclipse okay here i just had to copy paste my code okay just copy it and just paste it here okay so uh, i can i can again uh, talk about that um, uh, how we can add external jars which i already explained in the previous video i can uh, just explain only for a sake of understanding right very simple one uh, if you want to because the thing is by default eclipse doesn't know the meaning of hadoop right or doesn't know that our libraries or keywords used in a hadoop it means i need to add the external jars how we can do it simply have to right click on the uh, uh, project okay which is my project name configure build path and click on this extra add external jars and to add all the jars which is we are need to get this jars on this location under the hadoop common these four are files and under the hadoop map reduce you will find all the jars available okay so which i've already explained in the previous video right so cancel it here we have got the code available okay so uh, i hope you know that how to create a new project as well uh, simply have to click on this uh, new okay need to uh, just select the java project and click next need to give the project name okay and then finish okay so it will result to you the you the this my project okay and afterwards it will create this src as well and then uh, click on the right click on the src and click on the new class okay then give the class name in my case is a word count okay i've already given word count right and then simply paste the code here right so i've already did the previous uh, thing so you can see no error here so what i have to do is i need to now what compile the i need to get the jar file out of it okay it's available here right click on this click on export okay click on next jar okay and then uh, select this options okay then uh, give the new jar file name let's suppose you know, the jar file name is combiner or okay so uh, then click on finish then click ok here okay it will create the jar file right let's see where it's got created it's created here on my home uh, location which is combiner.jar okay this is is available so what i'll do now i'll just now uh, run my uh, uh, hadoop uh, syntax okay hadoop uh, like uh, then to calculate the word count right so how we can do it i've already explained the thing 
the syntax of Hadoop this is this Hadoop space jar space the input location space output location or you can also give Hadoop space jar space jar file location space uh, you can also give the file name or the class name space input space output okay so what I did is I've already have made one directory under the SDFS which is called input dir under which I've got demo.txt file here I've written some code okay I need to uh, do the word count of this code okay so what we'll do now so Hadoop jar the jar name is now in this case is combiner dot jar then input directory is input dir space uh, input uh, dir so this is my output directory output dir that's it the thing is uh, please do not forget that if you are in a different locations then give the absolute path of this jar file as well as the uh, exact location of your input and output directory the thing is why i'm using a relative path here because i'm already in the home location okay now press enter take a little time and just okay this is issue with the class name okay uh, okay fine got the point I need to go to that list again fine right click I guess it is not exported properly jar file okay then uh, now it will be combiner one next next okay i have missed this point right so i need to click on this word count okay the class name okay then finish so i've got now my another jar file which is combiner one dot jar so let's run the program again okay so this got processed so you can see under the input directory your output directory and you here you get the word count right because the thing is like uh, what errors came you can see just see the error again it's it said that the it's not getting the class so that's why I've uh, just done it again okay so the summary of the story is like the thing is that nothing has changed I've got the same result okay which I've got in a previous video as well, uh, which I've done without combiner. Okay, but here uh, to just to reduce the overhead of the uh, reducer. Okay, I've just make use of combiner, which is just exact a replica of that code. Okay, here maybe you cannot see right. Uh, maybe the uh, what's the ch uh, change you have got, but when we having a very bigger data, then you see the significant change in the result or the time, right? I hope you have uh, like understood the uh, like concept of combiner, right? In case you haven't understood, please comment on this video. Okay, I'll revert to it. Okay, thanks for watching.